Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I'm back for part two of Bonsai Project Updates. It's a beautiful day today, so we'll start today's video by taking a field trip to our community garden and edible forest, and we'll check up on the progress on that project. The community garden and edible forest is tucked in behind this small forest. Let's go in and have a look. The entrance is just off the arena parking lot down here. The arena has a rainwater collection system on the roof and that's where we get the rainwater for the community gardens. There is a small sign at the entrance of the garden. The sign reads, Welcome the local community food centre, Canada 150 years plus, commemorative community gardens and edible forest. The plan is to put a garden here at the entrance to welcome people in. So just up here in this area will be the welcome garden. It'll be a nice kind of entrance way to invite you into the garden. Yeah, it should look pretty good. So the first garden you'll come across then in the plan is just out here and it'll be a First Nations garden. It'll have a ceremonial lodge. It'll be surrounded by cedar trees. It'll just be a beautiful spot. It's hard to imagine what this place will look like in the future. At the moment, it's kind of like a blank canvas. There is a service entrance at the very back, way back here. So we're going to put in a pathway coming to the, from the entrance of the garden to that service road. And along that will be lined with dwarf fruit trees. We're picking the dwarf trees along the fence line there so, you know, the trees don't get too big and they don't start overhanging the neighbor's properties. So it'll just be, you know, a couple of rows of fruit trees all along the fence line. The existing community gardens are way down here. There's enough room for 50 plots and we're going to expand that to 100 plots in the future. The existing community garden has the 50 plots here and we're going to expand that to 100 plots over to this side towards the entrance and that should kind of help satisfy the demand for garden plots. The existing fruit trees that are planted, they've been here two years, will have to get moved to the back corner where the orchard will be. The back corner here is where the formal orchard will go. It'll be designed in a radial pattern with three spokes and circular pathways around the center and access roads all around it. So there'll be lots of serviceability to the orchard. Pruning fruit trees is very similar to developing a bonsai tree. You've got to develop that nice branch structure when the tree's young and just keep refining it as it gets older and older. You want to try and avoid making heavy cuts that just invites disease and insects into the tree. Our small group of stewards of the forest meets once a week and next week we're hopefully, weather permitting, coming out and giving these fruit trees their first pruning. I'll run out and show you where approximately the center of that radial type orchard will be. Here's a shot of the community garden as it exists today. The new garden will be planted right beside this existing one. And the fruit trees that we planted two years ago will have to be moved. They're small enough they can be moved safely. So we'll do that this spring. Over behind the community gardens in the far corner is where the nut and berry forest will be. Let's take a walk over to the nut and berry forest and I'll show you what kind of room we have for that. It's quite large. So we had a, the first gardening event of the year was CD Sunday. It was held at the local community food center and we had the map of this edible forest and community gardens on display and it got a lot of positive attention. People were just thrilled. We had a sign-up sheet for volunteers. So I think we'll get all kinds of help, you know, developing 
this flat piece of land into a beautiful forest. Behind the 50 plot community gardens is a shared garden and a lot of food is grown here and it goes to the local community meals that are once or twice a week. And anyone's free to garden in here, grow crops and vegetables, and then they can harvest it in fall. Behind me is a future site of the nut and berry forest. It'll be full of nut trees and all kinds of berry bushes, and there'll be all kinds of pathways through it that you can take a stroll. I feel very lucky to be involved with this project, planting an edible forest and community gardens. It'll be quite a sight to see in spring when everything's in bloom and in fall when you can go in and pick your own harvest. It'll be fantastic. The light's fading. It'll be time to go home. Here's the compost piles here. We had the soil tested in this area and everything came back good. All the results of the soil was really good. We got our compost tested here. This is worm compost. There's a worm farm in the city and they give us all this compost free. And it tested really, really good too. There's another pile over here. We get free wood chips from the city, so we'll be using those for the pathways. And we use the wood chips in all the pathways in the garden area here. We have a new shed this year. That's the first time I've seen it. I'm not sure what that's for if it's to go in the expansion, so the next 50 plots over here, or if we're gonna have two sheds in the one area, I'm not sure. So that's the first time I've seen it. This is our garden plot in here, the really messy one, right, <laughs> right there. You can see right there. Yeah, I guess uh, we didn't clean it up very well last year, but oh well, that doesn't matter. And there's the water tank, the gazebo and the picnic tables. It's really nice in summer here in this community garden. There's all kinds of people out any day of the week and you can talk to them about gardening and just enjoy the beautiful weather in the summer. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six fruit trees planted at the present moment. And they just look like little sticks, but we're going to give them a light pruning just to get them on the right track and kind of con continue to develop the structure over the years into beautiful fruit trees. So that's an update to the Community Edible Forest and Garden Project. It's time now to head back home and start today's work here in the Bonsai Zone. We're back in the plant room now, and today I'll be working on my Ficus microcarpa and my hibiscus bonsai. These two trees were recently pruned back. They were defoliated and pruned back, and now the new growth is coming in on them. So it's time to manage that new growth. I made sure the tree was nice and vigorous before I removed all the leaves and pruned it back to shape. And you can see that it's come back into leaf quite quickly. This branch here, just came up and it divided into two. And after I pruned it back, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six new branches coming off the main branch here. All those new branches that develop give you lots of choices for pruning, for directional pruning, and getting a new branch or two growing in the right direction. My hibiscus bonsai has also done really well after pruning it back hard. It sprouted all kinds of new branches, so now I can go in and select those branches I want to keep and the ones that aren't growing in a good direction, I'll just rub them off or prune them off. This is the third sunny day in a row for the plant room here. The temperature today is 35 degrees Celsius and we have 36% humidity, so it's quite warm in here today. The first tree that I'll start my branch selection on is the hibiscus tree. So the first thing to do is observe the tree to go in and look and all the new buds coming out on the branches and decide which ones you want to keep. Keeping in mind that you want your branches fanning outwards. You don't want them coming together in the middle of the tree. You want everything flowing and fanning out. So I can see I'll start on this branch here. 
This branch has two shoots coming out on this side. There's a branch already here, and this one would be the next one facing this direction. And this one down here is kind of redundant. If I wanted to shorten that branch, I, I could prune back to here, but I don't. I, uh, I would rather these two branches develop. So I'm going from the one branch dividing into two. So I'll rub this bud off. So I'll just come in with my fingernail and remove it like that. You'll notice that some of the branches are more vigorous than others. Some of these branches, I probably left a small branch on the tree and it's kind of started to grow really well. And these other branches are just coming in from old wood. So to equalize the vigor, I'll prune the vigorous branches back, picking outward facing leaves to prune just above those. So take the tip off there like that. And there's one up top here. I'll remove the tip also like that. And there's a small one down below here that I'm going to take off also. I don't want it growing too vertical, this branch. So I'm just gonna take the tip off, do a little directional pruning here, like that. So that's kind of pruned back all the vigorous branches to kind of balance the strength of the tree. When the new shoots are coming in on a tree, the tree is quite vulnerable at this point in time. If you get an attack of aphids or scale insects, all these new growing tips will wither away and die and the tree may or may not have enough energy to generate a new set of leaves. If the tree is kind of borderline and you lose all these new shoots to insects, your tree will probably die. So you've got to be very careful to inspect it for aphids, especially aphids. And if you see any, just pick them off and try and keep the tree growing strongly. I'm just going in and looking at the tree now, you know, studying each branch. This branch comes out. That's an okay division. There's another one coming off here. I'll let it grow, it's not too bad. This one here, it's at the center of a crotch of a branch, so I'll rub that off. Don't need that to grow there. Um, this main one here is looking quite good. There's one on the inside here that's not so good. It's kind of growing in towards the tree. It would be better to develop this one as a leader. So what I'll do, I'll let this one get a little stronger and then I'll prune this branch right back. I don't want to prune it off now because you could get some die back and if you lose this leader then you've got to go back to this one and so on. So it's better to have a safety so you know you develop this branch until it strengthens up and then you can remove this one. I probably could prune this one back a little shorter. There's a there's a leaf facing a better direction here. So I'm going to take it right back to here. We're pretty good. There's there's some shoots that are developing on top of the branches here that could be shortened in future, but I'm going to wait till they get a little stronger before I cut them back. Right now, there's a bud coming out here. I can get rid of that. We don't want it on the trunk. We don't want a new branch growing there. So I'll pick that one off. There's one up here that I also don't need. I'll pick that one off. And another one back here that I don't need. That one's gone. There's no point the tree putting energy in branches that you know you don't want to develop in future. There's another one here I'm going to remove too. Just like that. Another one I can rub off here. I don't want small branches developing off these main trunk lines. I probably could even get rid of this one down here. I'll leave it for now, just in case I want kind of a back branch in that area. But uh, yeah, I think that's got that tree pruned up for now. I was just doing some misting here in the plant room and the humidity's gone up to 46% now, and the temperature's 35 degrees Celsius, so pretty tropical in here. I'm all finished pruning up the hibiscus for now, so I'll put it back on the bench and we'll get out the ficus. I remember someone saying once that when they prune the canopy on the tropical trees, they just prune it off absolutely flat, and they 
theory behind this is that all the branches in the middle of the tree are more vigorous than these outer branches. So they grow more quickly and you get that natural kind of dome shape on the top of the tree after pruning. So it might take, you know, a month or two, but eventually the strength of the tree, the apical dominance takes over and you kind of get a natural curve to the top of your tree. I've never pruned a tree flat, but this one is quite a flat shape on top. So and I've noticed that happening. I've noticed that the branches in the middle thicken up faster than the branches around the outside. So it's definitely, definitely true that you need to prune, you know, these middle branches more vigorously than these thinner outer ones to keep the tree in balance. With all the sunny days we've been having lately, the tree's growing really quickly. So it may be, you know, the last few days where I can actually see the structure of the tree clearly, all these new branches are gonna start growing in and the leaves are gonna get larger. And pretty soon it'll just be a massive green on top of the tree. So I've gotta go in now and select all the branches that I wanna keep and rub off all the ones that I don't. So I'll just take it one branch at a time Here's a branch growing inside here that I'm going to rub off. Gone. There's a branch growing on the top of this branch. I'm going to take that one off like that. There's one growing straight up here that I'll remove like that. And one growing towards the inside of the tree here I'll remove. There's one growing on the inside here. I'll pinch that one off. Just rub it off. It's just a matter of inspecting every branch. There are some branches that haven't leafed out yet and they may be dead, I don't know. Some of these branches were a little weak and that was because they were shaded out by some of the upper canopy. So they'll either die off or strengthen up, one of the two. There's one I can pinch off here. One growing on the inside here I'll pinch off. This one's not growing in a good direction, I'll pinch that one off. Sometimes you do get a lot of natural dieback, you know, branches that are trying to grow in the inside where it's dark under the canopy here. And you'll just naturally, they'll die off just like it would in nature. And it helps to create a natural looking tree. There's a branch growing from that center trunk that I pruned back hard, growing across here that I want to remove. So I'll get rid of that, like that. There's a couple of branches coming off that thicker trunk that I cut back and I'll bring the camera in and I can decide then which branches I want to keep and which ones I want to remove. I'll come around the back of the tree now. So we'll just rotate around here. So here is that thick trunk in there it was growing very tall and vigorous. And I cut it back right up here. And I got a lot, lot of new sprouts growing off it. I got one, two, three, four, and I've already removed one. So yeah, these vigorous branches, when you cut them back hard, they, they sprout all kinds of new growth on them. So I definitely like the one that's growing in this direction up top here. The one back here is growing straight into this branch. So I don't like that so much, so I'm going to remove it. Just like this, so here I go, like that. The one down low here is also growing straight out towards this branch. So I'll remove that one also, like that. So I've kept just the one branch off of there, which is what I wanted to do is give it a bit more movement and redirect the growth in a better direction. So, mission accomplished. There is a branch right up front here that I'll have to get from the front of the tree. You can see it in at the crotch there. I'll have to rub that off too. So I'll get my pruners in here and remove that little branch, that little sucker there. I'll continue to remove the branches I don't want. There's one here that can go, crossing branch. I usually have the fan on in here but when I'm making a video, I have to turn it off because it's noisy. So it gets really hot in here. 
That's good though, it'll get me used to the summer temperatures. Yeah, so the idea is just to, you know, remove those branches you don't want to keep, so you're not putting energy into growing those branches for no reason and they'll just have to be cut off later on. There's one growing here in a wrong spot. Get rid of that. There's two growing from here. I'm going to remove the one. And don't worry if you miss a branch. You can always prune it later if you see it. If it starts growing and you notice a branch growing in towards the center of the tree or growing in the wrong direction or from a bad spot, you can always go in and prune it later on. You don't have to do all your pruning at once. I think I've used up all my time for part two of this series. So we'll continue on in part three of Bonsai Project Updates. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.